Hello. So I've been debating this morning whether I would do a YouTube or a live, and I'm actually doing both. So I have big screen and little screen, so if you see me looking two different places, that's why. And I also have mom screen over here. So these pants are very comfortable, not terribly flattering, but very comfortable. I don't think I have a hair hoopy doopy, so that's all right. So not really sure what's going to happen yet because I never know. I just start moving and we'll see where it goes. So. I'm gonna suggest starting laying on your back. And just take a second, hug your knees into your chest, and take a little roll side to side, just kind of massaging your sacrum into the ground. And then just give yourself a moment to pause and then just let your legs drop to one side. It doesn't really matter which one, but then really stretch through the opposite arm so you can try to get a nice twist, getting both of your shoulders to the floor as best as you can. And then inhale, either using your belly or your hand to assist, bring your legs through the center and then over towards the other side. And then again, just try to stretch out through the arm that's opposite the direction of your legs, just to help bring your shoulders to the floor. And then come back into the center, just cross your right ankle over your left thigh. I like to use my left leg and my belly to hold the leg in, but you can totally use your arms if you wanna soften that a little bit. And then just let your legs drop over to the right. And that's so you can kind of get a little deeper into your outer hip. And you might try to work both shoulders down to the mat, so probably need to press the right shoulder down. And then here, when you come to the center, just a moment in supine double pigeon. So what I did is I wiggled my left foot to the left so both knees can come down. And if this is too much, you can bring your feet together, knees wide and bound angle. It's similar but different. Just want to get your hip open a little. And then use your hands as you need to to draw your legs back up to the center. You might just hug them into your belly for a sec. And then cross your left ankle over your right thigh. And again, just squeeze in, get a nice little kind of compact ball. And then from here, let your legs drop over towards the right. You can hold onto it with your right hand or just let the foot go where it wants to. Holding the foot in place gets a little more into the IT band, at least that's what I find. And then here when you come to the center, just kind of wiggle your right foot over to the left a bit and then let your left knee drop down. And I know for me, when I'm seated, this actually touches, but when I'm laying down, it's far from it. So just noticing it might feel different than when you're sitting up. And then from here, just start to unwind the legs, hug them into your belly one more time. And then just let yourself roll to the side. And then coming into hands and knees. If you'd rather come into child's pose right away, go right ahead, but just letting yourself have some room to hollow out your belly and then drop the belly. And I plan to use the wall a little bit more for support, so if you have the option to be near a wall, go right ahead, no big deal if not. Coil in, take a moment here just to pause, really rounding your spine to the sky. And then let your belly lengthen out, walk your arms forward, coming into puppy pose, or if you prefer child's pose, hips to heels. Then inhale, just let yourself come up, walk the hands back towards you so you're just standing on your shins. And just let your right hand come down, the left arm comes up and over. And then left arm can circle down, let the left arm come down, the right arm can come up and over. And then here, let both hands come to your low back. Just lift the heart, just getting a little stretch of the belly, not trying, trying for a big back bend yet. And then when you come forward, just let your hands come on down. I do the mom blocks because of my arthritic bones, but it's totally up to you. And then coming up and back, downward facing dog. And just take a moment here, like I like to just kind of let my hips sway, really press the heels to the mat, depending on your hamstring mobility, which my hamstrings are relatively open. You can bend your knees as much as you need to. And I still like doing this too, because either way, it gives me more opportunity to take the weight out of my hands. And then let yourself just Come up towards your fingertips. Take a pause here, and I'll just turn for a second. Let your left hand stay down. Right hand can come up to the sky or to your low back. Gaze can be high or low. And then let your right hand come on down. Left arm can come to your hip, up to the sky, or whatever feels comfortable for you. And then just let both hands come down to the mat, and then just ease your way up to standing. And just take a moment, sweep the arms up high. And then exhale, hands come on into your heart. 
So here, we're just going to come into movement. I plan to kind of try to make it a little bit playful. Um, but just like always, do what you want to do and just see what you want to do. <laughs> so here, inhale, coming to the top of the mat. Draw your arms up to the sky. On the exhale, come on into chair. What? I know. Getting right into it. Push the hands down, right leg up. And then sink in. Push the hands down, left leg up. Come on down. Now this time, just let both hands come down. Sit a little deeper, perhaps, and reach your arms forward. Now, we're coming down to a seat. I'm going to tell you that ahead of time, just in case if you have any knee or tailbone issues. I don't want you to do anything clunky. So if it's comfortable, let your knees go wider like you're in a velocity. Now, I'm pretty close to the floor, so I'm not nervous, but if you're not very close to the floor here, you might want to use your hands to walk you back. And just let your bum come down, and your legs come up, coming into Navasana. So you'll see how I'm kind of fighting the balance there. That's actually because if you lift your chest up enough, your legs will start to drop. If you pull your legs up too high, it's going to make you roll backwards. So you can kind of find the sweet spot. Now here, just extend, hover the boat for a moment, and then come back up, bent legs or straight legs. Now you can roll back, roll forward. Some of you might jump back, but I'm not. And then coming to high plank, chaturanga, I'm doing knees down these days. Upward facing or cobra, use your legs a ton. And then up and back, downward facing dog. Take an inhale, let the right leg come up to the sky. Step the right foot forward, but we're just landing in a lunge. So left knee can be high or low. I'm going to braid my hair while we're in the lunge. So feel free to do any arm variation you like. I'm going to try to get my hair around my face. Now, I like to pulse up and down a little bit or put the left knee on the ground and kind of let the hips go forward and back a little bit. Just something to start to open up the psoas. And then from here, give a pause, let the left shin come down, pull back, just simply straighten your right leg which I do tend to start this way a lot, but I do it purposely because you get a little quads, a little hips, a little hamstring. And you're like, wait, what hips? Well, that's what's coming. Bend into the right knee. You can keep your left hand down. Give a little press if you wish, or if you want to curl the back toes under. A little extra fire to it. And then all we're going to do is end up facing the other side of the mat. So letting yourself just kind of turn towards the left, come all the way around to the back of your mat. And now you're in the lunge again. So back knee high or low. This is where I was braiding my hair, so we can just pulse a couple times. Just letting yourself kind of get some space. And if the knee's on the ground, that's fine. Just let your hips go forward and back some. Then just let your right shin come down to the mat, pull back, and lengthen your left leg. And again, you can be on blocks, your hands can be your hips, wherever you're more comfortable. And then just let yourself sink back into the knee. Right hand down, left hand might be on your thigh. Back knee can be high or low, and just give a little press, letting yourself open out through your side waist. It's not your side waist, it's your hip. A little bit sideways, I guess. Then let your right foot come back to the center, come up and over, bending your front knee again, and then just come around towards the front of the mat. Let your right leg come back to meet the left, knees high or low, coming down to your belly. Now here, extend your right arm in line with your right shoulder, flip the palm to the sky, and then just roll your left toes behind you. If you want to go a little bit deeper, you might bend both of your knees so they face towards the sky. Or if you liked that double pigeon in the beginning, you can actually do it here. And really what this is doing is making your hips belly face the sky more, so it just makes the shoulder stretch deeper. Then unwind your legs, come back towards the belly, take your right arm forward, left arm underneath, right leg out to the side. I know it's a little tongue twister here and then just roll your chest open. So you end up in a twist with your knee dropping over towards the left. And then just let yourself come back to your belly. If it's okay, keep your left arm under you for a moment. Readjust as you need to. I had to kind of move because I was squashing my chest. <laughs> and then push into your right hand enough so when you lift up, you can draw the left arm out without dragging it. And then take your left arm out in line with the left, palm to the sky. And then same thing, just rolling the toes behind. You might notice on one side you can't quite go as deeply, and that's probably just because of your hips or your shoulder. So again, the both knees to the sky, double pigeon option. Like on this side, I definitely can't go as much because I'm teaching Mary image. This is actually my right side, my dominant arm. So it's a little less space. I'm talking wicked fast, I'm sorry. It's because I've had coffee and Diet Coke already. And actually breakfast. <laughs> We're almost 
Fred Chad, what? Wave was Fred Chad was. <laughs> then come back down towards your belly. Take your left arm forward, right arm underneath, bend the left knee out to the side, and then just open it up. So again, you're just in a twist. Knee coming over towards the right. I'm just wiggling over so I can get the camera so I can see mom. Make sure she's okay. Good, she's still sleeping. She woke up, had breakfast, and went back to sleep. <laughs> And then come back onto your belly. Now you can keep the right arm underneath you and take the left arm forward. I didn't say it on the first side, but you could also cross the arm and that takes it a little bit deeper. The more of your upper body is down, the deeper the stretch might be. And then from here, just let yourself press down to get the right arm out of there. Take your hands down underneath your shoulders, press into your legs, press into your hands, and just come into a cobra. So I know with my big baggy pants, you probably can't tell, but I'm wicked squeezing my legs and my glutes for that matter, just so I'm not going into my low back. And then let yourself lower down. Either do that a second time, or if you're feeling up dog, getting your hips and thighs up off the floor. And then curl your toes under, up and back, downward facing dog. Giving yourself a breath here, and now press into your right foot. Take the left leg up to the sky. Now step forward, come on into warrior one. Sorry, my back just did a little funny thing, so I'm going slow for a sec. Ooh, 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 I don't know why it does that. It's not even the same thing every time. But anyway, letting your arms press back and the heart come forward. Now, just adding a little upper body, and it's gonna make your upper body heavier, so if you're not digging it, just stay still. Let the arms come forward, and then palms away, sweep down. Palms forward, reach forward. Palms away, sweep down. One more time forward, maybe changing up how you do the arms. And then from here, just exhale. Let your hands come down to the mat. Now you choose, either sink back into half split or maybe taking the right leg up to the sky, coming into standing split. It just kind of depends on what mood you're in. You could bend the leg in the air. You might try to reach for the foot. Where the hell's my foot? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> and maybe get a little push to the sky. It's funny because it's actually not happened to me before because I usually can find my foot pretty easy. And then let yourself release it back. Now we're going to pause in the twist here. If you're on blocks, make sure they're flat. Let yourself roll open. But now here, really ground into your left foot. You might want to take your hand to your hip. Just see if you can pick up the right leg for a sec. So we're just adding a little strength. And then bring your right foot down. Pull the left knee into your belly. Extend it underneath your right arm and either keep both hands down or you can open your arms up. And then just bring the hands down to the mat, pull your knee into your belly, and then just pause, put it back on the ground. Let yourself come on up and over, skandasana towards the right, and you can kind of roll up on your left heels if it's comfortable to go that low. Come on up and over. There has to be no less than 300 elastics in my house for your hair, and I don't have one of them down here. <laughs> Now look over your right leg, go into the back of the mat again, shift up and over, come on in to warrior one. Draw your arms up to the sky. Now here just let your arms press back, heart forward. Now the last time I went wide with the arms, maybe this time you go down and up. Maybe you'd rather not move the arms at all. I just, I like to have a little movement within the poses. I just find it helps me. Then the next time you draw forward, maybe pause for a moment, get a little extra fire. And then you can let your hands come down to the mat. Either put the left shin on the floor or shift forward and come on into standing split. If you want to bend the top leg, reach back for the foot, give a little push. It's just a nice way to open up the quad. Left hand on a block helps a lot too. And then let your left foot come back to the mat. Oop, there's a little spot in my back again. Roll your hips open. Now here, if you want to try to pick up the back foot, you probably need to step your right foot a little closer to you so you can bear the weight, push into your hand. <laughs> I don't know if I can do it on this side. I'm digging up my left leg in my head, but it's not actually happening, so that's okay. And then let yourself come around. <laughs> and then as you bend your front knee, pause for a second, left hand down, right arm up to the sky. You can't laugh at yourself, it's not worth it. Let your right hand come down. Let your left arm come on up to the sky. And then just bring both hands down, shift up and over to the left, spin all the way to the front of the mat, and then here, just slide your leg back. And then take a moment to come down towards your belly. 
Now, you can do this with both arms. I'm gonna focus on one. Bend your right knee and reach back for your right ankle. Now, you're gonna want, we're gonna roll to the side. You wanna keep this shoulder kind of tucked under you. So you're rolling yourself to the side. Now, you can keep your left leg long, or if you want to reach back with the left hand too. Ugh, I don't know if I like that or not. But let's just see how it feels. For me, I don't like it right now because my shoulders are really tight, but that's probably because I need this. <laughs> Now you can hold on to both feet as you roll into the belly. I don't like the way that feels on my hip bones, so I'm gonna release, come back slow, and then let your legs come down. I used to like rolling and rocking, but I think it's old bones. <laughs> Bend the left knee, left foot, left ankle, whatever you can reach, and then let yourself roll open. So again, here, you're trying to keep your chest open. You can reach back for the right ankle if you want. Just letting yourself open up the front side of your body. I do a lot of leaning over, folding forward, just like the rest of us in computers and things, but taking care of my mom makes me forward bend a lot. So I like to get this shape in. Either holding on or letting go, come back onto your belly. Now here, once again, coming into Cobra. And again, I'm coming into a little bit of a higher Cobra because this feels good in my body. Know that it can be anywhere along, but my legs are really strong, so I'm not just cranking into flexibility. Take a moment to pause if you want up dog. Sometimes I do up dog with my toes curled under, which does work. You just have to keep your legs super strong so you're not going into your low back. And then up and back, downward facing dog. Now we're gonna travel to the top of the mat. This is when the wall might be handy if you have one nearby. Just take one leg to the sky and then walk it forward. Take the other leg to the sky and then walk it forward. Now here, if you want, when you take the leg to the sky, just take a little hop, step it forward, other leg to the sky, take a little hop, ooh, <laughs> and then step it forward. Now, if you have any more room, you could do a couple more. I'm pretty much as far as I'm getting. So then just forward fold. You can hook your big toes, let your head shake out, get the hair out of your face. Inhale, take a halfway lift, and then exhale, fold in. Release the feet, coming all the way up to standing. Draw the arms up to the sky. And then hands come on into the heart. Sorry, I'm just turning the camera on so I can see mom. Okay, she's still sleeping. Okay, so I'm gonna face you for this part. Bend the knees, draw the arms up. Now press down, take the right leg up, cross the right ankle over your left thigh. Kind of one of my favorite poses these days. And then just let yourself sink in. Now you could have your hands on the wall to make it so you don't have to fight the balance. Ooh, look like a maniac with my hair. If you feel comfortable, you might sink in a little more. What I've personally been enjoying lately is holding on to the foot and standing up more. It's a standing half pigeon. Whoop, I looked at myself, I threw them off my balance. Notice I'm pushing the foot away rather than pulling the foot to my hip. This is what's gonna stretch here more. Pulling the foot to your body is gonna do more with your knee, but not as much your hip. Then place the right leg back on your left thigh, and then however you want to, switch sides. So left ankle crossing, get your balance. Give yourself a moment just to settle. It does typically help if your upper body's touching your lower body in some capacity, even if it's just light, just to get that connection helps with the balance. And then maybe hold on to the left foot and draw up. And I've done this a few times this week, so it actually doesn't feel too strong in my hips right now. So if it's a lot of sensation, be easy on yourself. Let your left ankle come on back down. And then just easy, both feet down towards the mat. Just facing this way, you don't have to turn. So here, if you'd like, there's gonna be a moment that you can come into crow. If you're not feeling it today, totally don't worry about it. And I'll even tell you a way to kind of do it without making it stressful. So if you ground your hands, take your knees, try to squeeze on the outside of your arms and look forward. And then maybe just pick up one foot, put it down. Pick up the other foot, put it down. If you feel like it, pick up both feet, but squeeze the feet towards each other. Squeeze your feet together and up. That's gonna make you feel much stronger in your belly than just hanging heavy on your arms. If you wanna to jump to Chaturanga, go for it. I'm not really doing that these days. But then coming up dog, and then eventually it's down dog. Take a moment just to pause. Now reach your right leg up to the sky. Step forward this time to warrior two. So grounding your left heel and then draw the upper body up. You can reverse your warrior and then 
come on up and over towards side angle. Now turn your left palm to face behind you and just let it drop behind the back. Right hand can stay where it is. If you're comfortable binding, go right ahead. I don't even think I can with my pants today, <laughs> but I'm bringing my hand to the chest. And then just trying to keep your chest open to the side wall, because you'll probably notice if you are holding on to your arms, or even not, that your body tries to roll down to the floor. You're trying to keep it square to the side of the room. Then from here, you can start to lengthen the right leg. And yes, you can do that even if you're bound, but not comfortable for everybody. And then if you wish, unwind the arms, and then just lengthen out. Gaze can be high or low. I've been enjoying the extra side waist opening these days, taking the arm overhead. You can float the right arm out to the side if you wish. And then just inhale, come on up to the center. Right toes in. Now here, toes out, heels in. Coming into Malasana. Susie would call these my shocky shit quad pants. Woo! Gets a little breeze in there, it's nice. Then you can bring your hands to your hips. Maybe shoulders to your ears for a moment. And then lengthen your legs for a pause. Just a quick forward fold. <laughs> and then start to bend into your left knee, shift up and over into warrior two. I think I'm funny. <laughs> Reverse your warrior. Come on up and back. And then side angle, left arm down, right arm can reach. Now, again, you can keep it like this, or if you want to take the right hand and roll it behind you, either binding the hands, or I like to float the left arm with my hands touching towards my chest. It's just that not having that support will activate your belly and your side waist a little bit differently. And then from there, if you wish, lengthen the left leg. Now you can keep the bind if you're comfortable or unwind the bind at any time. Sweep the right arm up and over your right ear. And then from here, just inhale, you can draw yourself back up, one or two just for a split second. And then turn your toes out, your heels in against your back in Malasana. Then here, just give a little twist. So just letting yourself turn to one leg. It doesn't really matter which one first. And then come on up and over to the other one. Now here, look over your right shoulder. You're gonna come back around towards the front of the room. And then take your left leg up to the sky. Pull your left knee behind the right and squat down. And think of maybe picking up your hands. Try to push the left leg back up to the sky, hands or not. Knee into your belly. Leg to the sky, hands or not. Now, sink it in, squeeze. Here's where you might be able to pick up your hands a little easier. And then bring both hands down, left leg to the sky. And if you'd like, take a little hop. This isn't my good leg. <laughs> and then from here, just let your left foot come on down, right leg to the sky. So balancing out, right knee wraps in, squeeze. Maybe you start to play with balance. Squeeze it, bring it back up. Squeeze, bring it back up. And then again, squeeze, maybe pause. Hands might come up for a moment. <laughs> and then take the leg up to the sky, hop or not. And again, it's just having some fun with it. And then you can bring both feet to the mat. If you want to jump to Chaturanga, go right ahead, but then lower down towards your belly. Reach back towards your feet, bend your knees. Now lift your chest, reach towards your ankles, but don't take them. And then try to squeeze your legs together. And then lift your heart up a little higher. So it should be a lot of work in your inner thighs and perhaps your glutes too. Your hands can even come to your low back if that feels better. And then just exhale, let yourself come on down. Slide your hands under the shoulders, push back like child's pose, but then stand on your shins, come right up onto your shins. Now right arm can sweep behind, bring it to your low back. Left arm can sweep behind, bring it to your low back. Now here, ground down to rise up. So coming into camel, try not to jut the hips forward too much. I think mine are a little, but then try to lift the chest. You can keep your chin tucked if looking back doesn't feel good. And then inhale, come up kind of slow. If you need a totally pause moment, sit to your heels or bring your hands down and come up to down dog. Now take an inhale, left leg to the sky. Step the left foot forward, warrior one, but it will change pretty quickly after that. <laughs> Inhale, draw your arms high. 
Now here, take your hands to your hips and lengthen your left leg. Now I know my pants are really baggy so you can't see it necessarily. I'm trying to keep a soft bend in both my knees so I'm not hyperextending. Think of crown of the head to the front of your mat and then maybe draw yourself up. Crown of the head to the front of the mat. If you're comfortable extending your arms, go right ahead. I'm supporting my back. And then one more time and pause. Now, your choice, either staying here, if you want to walk your legs down a little bit lower, go right ahead. But what I want you to notice is where you actually feel more sensation. Like I can put my face on my shin, but then I'm just going into flexibility. Here, I'm still using some of my strength. Now, two things are gonna happen. This is where you might wanna block onto your right hand or something, if you have something with height. You can take your left arm up to the sky. Try to keep reaching your tailbone behind you. I'm not that worried if this is even. I find that it's more comfortable actually if it's not, but you can play. Now here, gaze down towards the mat. Let your left hand come to your left hip. Probably move your right hand forward a bit and then float the right leg. If you can get the left arm back up to the sky, go ahead, so you're in revolve, half moon. Maybe, maybe, maybe you reach back towards the right foot and give it a little push away. And then easy, release the foot down. You can lengthen the left leg just for a breath and then soften into your knee enough. You can come up and over and shift over to the right. Now, I'm gonna take one to each side. We'll do something more interesting in Skandasana the second set when you're a little bit warmer. So I'm gonna bring one of my blocks over here and then coming into warrior one over the right foot. Again, just for a moment. Hands can come to the hips as you lengthen the right leg. Tailbone back, heart forward. And then again, just letting yourself kind of have that little bit of a pulse. If the pulsing for any reason doesn't feel comfortable, just stay. I'm, I'm doing the pulse purposely to kind of get into my glute and my hamstring a little, just making it fire up. And then from here, just pause where you want to pause. Crown of the head to the front of the mat. Your hands can be high or low. Now adding the twist. And if you needed to, you could always soften this front knee more. Left hand down, right arm to the sky. You'll probably notice that one side of this, you have more space on the other, or one side you have less urge to scream. Could be either. Then here, look down towards the mat. You can let your left hand slide forward, and then maybe float the left leg or bend the left knee, reaching back towards the ankle, drawing the heart to the sky. I might have cut off my head on the camera, but you can see the rest, that's all that counts. And then here, release your left foot as gracefully as possible. Maybe a warrior one second. And then shift up and over, bend your left knee. Now we're gonna come all the way down to a seat. So you can totally undo your legs if you need to, or you can use a block if that's good for you. And then you're gonna side bend over your right leg, which might mean you're up high. I'm actually moving the block because I know it's making me hyperextend this knee. If the left knee being to the sky is really uncomfortable, drop it open like tree. Open it up. Then inhale up. Now here, if you're feeling enthusiastic, pick it all up and shift to the other side, or just straighten your left leg and bend your right knee. You don't always have to make it complicated. And then reach up and over. That's giving yourself some space. Then inhale, come on up. So we're gonna be facing over the left leg at the top of the mat. So if you want, you can just simply, oh, there goes that back thing again. Hold, please. <laughs> you can just bend your knees and stand up, or you can shift over your left foot. Sorry, my back didn't appreciate that. So now think left foot on the ground, and then hands can come down towards the mat, or maybe you try to balance at your heart. See if you can float the right leg to standing split. Now, if you want, see what happens if you drop your head and fold in deeper towards your standing leg. Because really, it's not about the leg in the air. It's the leg on the ground and where you're forward bending. That's what makes it standing split. Warrior three is the halfway lift. Now, from here, you can release the right foot down and then just take the left leg up. Letting yourself have a moment to pause. Hang your head heavy, maybe. Now here, we're gonna do a little trick that my friend Shasha taught me. So you can drop both feet, come all the way up. So it doesn't matter if you don't have a wall because you're just gonna do standing split a second time. If you do have a wall, you're gonna get close enough to it that you can get your back to touch. And if that's already extraordinarily uncomfortable, I would just stay in the front of your mat. 
And then just take your left leg up to the sky as high as you can. And then to see, can you get it all the way up there? It's just basically another standing split. But what happens is because of my leg, being, my back being near the wall, my standing leg's getting a deeper stretch, I am bending my elbows a little bit if you can't see. And then you can start to bring the foot down, push off with your hands. Sometimes it's a little awkward to get out of. Then right leg to the sky, shoulders to the wall, and then right leg up. And you might notice this, this is my more mobile leg and hip. I'm just trying to breathe. <laughs> And then easy, you can let both feet come on down to the mat. Take a moment just to draw yourself up tall. And then hands come on in towards the heart. Now we're just coming down to sit. I'm gonna have us go through that chair to boat thing again. So if you don't want to, just sit. Oop, I just hear my name, hang on. Okay, I'm gonna have to end soon. Draw your arms up as you take a seat. Now we're going down to our bum. So if you wanna use your hands, use them. You can let yourself drop the knees wide, sink your hips lower, and then roll back, drawing up into boat. Yeah. Mom is awake. Okay. Well, I was really only going to do one other thing anyway, so we'll be okay. So let your right leg come down, roll onto your right side, put your left foot on the floor. Now just see if you can pick up your right ankle, and if that's good, stay there. If you'd like, see if you can push and lift your whole side body. And this is for Didi. If you like, reach down towards your foot with your hand and then press up. So you're in a little baby grasshopper or sexy beach pose, I think she calls it. And then just switch to the other side. Mom, I'll be there in a second. Okay? All right, one last pose. Thanks, Dave, I heard you. <laughs> And then from here, right foot crosses in front of the left thigh. Come down to the shoulder. Now you can just keep it casual. Just to let it be a little stretch, be a little, hey, someone bring me some grapes. Or see if you can pick up the left foot. That's one way, it's working your inner thigh. Or push into your foot, see if you can lift up the whole shebang. So my hip's off the floor. And then if it's available, no idea if it is, reach down towards your foot. I like it forearm. And then you try to pick the whole thing up. It doesn't look like I picked up, but I did a little. And then release it down. Now here, just take your legs wide. And depending on how this feels for your body, I like the forward fold here. If you're not someone who likes it, you might want to sit up tall. Another thing I've been doing is folding forward, but floating the arms, so it makes me use more strength. And if you wanted to really go for it, you could put your feet on the wall, and that would give you a deeper stretch. But letting your arms come on down. You can bring your legs together. And I had intended to do more, but my mommy's calling me, so I need to go upstairs. So if you'd like to feel more balanced in your practice, you might want to do a twist, a pigeon or a frog if you wanted to, and then maybe a bridge or some kind of back bend. Try to take some shavasana, even though I'm not doing one right now. So thank you all for turning in. I hope you had some fun. If you can't read my shirt, it says I would flex, but I like this shirt, so. <laughs> See you later, y'all.